Oh yes. Shall we pray? Lord God, we come to you yet, Lord, on this beautiful day to give you thanks and praise for everything that you've done for us in the past few short. And yet, Lord, we come to you, Lord, carrying all our prayer requests to you, Heavenly Father, to ask you that, Lord, be gracious to us and look after us. May we feel the Spirit, Lord, moving among us, Lord, as we praise you, Lord, in everlasting songs of praise, Lord. May we feel your move, Lord, in us, Lord, and around us, Lord, that when we live here, Lord, we live with a joyous heart to say that indeed God was with us. We continue, Lord, to bring all those, Lord, who have asked us to keep them in our prayers. Those whose, whose names they are printed on the public page, and even those, Lord, whom we know that they are in need of our prayers, Lord. Be with us, Lord, all with liberty, everything, Lord, that we do for them throughout the week. We ask all this, Heavenly Father, for we know that you live and reign in all time, Lord. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Alright, I think we are getting the first team. Okay. My dear sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And also with you.
for the sins of their parents to be third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love and thousands generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will, will not hold anyone guiltless who misuse his name. Remember the Sabbath, the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day in a Sabbath to the Lord you are born. On it you shall not do anything, anything in work. Neither you know you know your son or daughters, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor your foreigners residing in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but he is seated on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land that the Lord of God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hear the word of the Lord.
out. Get this out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples, remember, his disciples, remember that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then respond to him, What sign can you show us to prove, to prove your authority to do all these things? Jesus answered them, His throne is taken, and I will raise it up in, the, in, I will raise it up in three days. They replied, It has taken 40 years to build this temple, and we are going to raise it up in three days. But the temple he had, the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he said. Then they believed the scriptures and the words that he had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem, sorry, here ends. This is the gospel of Christ.
but Father, I'm just saying, just use me to deliver your good news to your people. Father, prepare our heart also to receive the good news so that it change our thoughts, our mind, the way that we live. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take your seat. Maybe allow me to start by posing this question to you. How would they know that you are his disciples? How would they know that you are his disciples? So that we just see, it says they will know that you are my disciples if ever you love one another. They will know that you are my disciples if ever you love one another. The message of today is say how to live righteous before God and others. How to live righteous before God and others. It's going to be found in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, 1 to 17. Each household has its own rules. As you know, sometimes we feel like maybe those rules, they are too strict for us. They tell you that uh, by now you have to be back at home. You, you have to go out after washing the, 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 those plates and what on. You feel like maybe those, uh, those rules, they are oppressing us. But at the end of the day, those rules, they were made there to protect us. They were made there in order for them to make us a better person. Even in the church, we have different guilds that they have their own rules and regulations. Sometimes you feel like maybe they are respecting us. Sometimes you feel like maybe they don't even inspire you to grow. But being honest with you, those were made to make you stronger. Those were made to make the guild on its own to be to be unique from other guilds, even looking at the Anglican on its own, for it to differentiate you from other church, for it to, for, for people to know that you are an Anglican, for people to differentiate you from other people, they must see through the rules and regulation of the church. Rules are there. As a country, they have set the rules. Whether we like it or we don't like it, they are there and they are there in order to make us better people. Sometimes even because they are not preparing us, sometimes we shy away to follow them. We tend to develop a mentality to say rules were made by people and they can also be broken by people. But today's reading, we encounter a message, a household like here, the Israelites. They were given a set of rules, a set of ten commandments. We are told that Moses went on on top of mountain, which was Mount Sinai. He was given a two tablets, which contained ten commandments. He was given an instruction. Go and tell my people, this is what I want from them. The instruction in which they were given, the rules in which they were given, was for them to live righteous before God and us. These rules were for them to be honest with one another, was for them to be kind with one another, was for them to show fair, fair one another, fairness between one another. These rules were for them in order for them to love God and respect one another. These rules, they were there for them to live in a way that is good, before God and other people. As we go into today's reading, which is Exodus chapter 20, starting from verse 1 to 17, Moses given these words. He said, Go and deliver it to my people. Go and tell my people this. These rules they were given to Moses. He saw it written that my people, if ever they follow this, then I will know that this is my nation. And I started by asking, how will they know that you are my disciples if ever you love one another? He saw it fitting so that for my nation in which I have chosen, for it to be different from other nations, it must follow these rules. 
He given them the Ten Commandments to say this is what you have to follow. I'm not even surprised on today's reading in which is John chapter 2. We encounter Jesus being so upset with the people who were gambling in the temple, the people who were, who were, who were, who were showing no respect to the temple. The rules were given in order for, for, for people to live righteous before God and others. If ever we turn this temple, in which is a holy temple, we turn it and make it a temple room, do you consider starting as the righteous before God? But allow me as we go into deep that these rules were given in order for people to show respect to God. These rules, they were given to people in order for people to show honor to the one who has, been, who has created them. Allow me to divide these rules into two parts. I want us to concentrate on the first part first, in which if the first commandments, first commandment until number four, those commandments are given. When they were given, the concentration on it, it was for the people of the mankind or the creation in which was created in order for it to live righteous before God. I'm afraid to say that let me project this that maybe we get able to do it. But because of time, allow me to just, just, just a little thinking to say, uh, those respect uh, your God, honor your God, uh, set aside a day to worship, those are the rules in order for you to live righteous before God. The first four, those are the rules in which they teach us to put God first in our lives and to show respect and love to us, the one who has created us. As we look on the other side, from, from commandments number five until ten, those are the set of rules in which they were created or which they were given in order for us to live good with one another. If ever you can just try to, to remember them in your mind, do not commit about you. Uh, honor your father and mother. Those are the rules or those are the set in order for it for us to live good to righteous, for us to live good with one another. These commandments, they were given to us in order for us to treat one another with fairness, with kindness, with respect. We can count on and on as we go on, but at the end of the day, he wants us to embrace those fruits of spirit in our heart. He wants us to showcase those fruits of spirit to one another. He wants us to be a unique nation to other people. When they look at us, they must see that we are different because of the rules in which we are given. Those set of rules, they were given in order for us to show respect to the one who has created us. Living righteously before God and others, it does not necessarily mean following these rules. I don't know if I remember the time we were reciting these rules, were we understanding what we are reading? Or we are just announcing it or we are just pronouncing it because it's been projected there? For some men who might even take it for granted to say, I have known these rules since maybe Sunday school. It does not mean anything to me anymore. But when we look deep inside to say, if ever we have to ask how many who have followed those Ten Commandments, you find that maybe you start to make excuses. To that, this one I have read it because of this. This one I have read it because of this. This one I have read it because of this. That's a human tendency. Like we tend to make excuses for breaking rules. We say that because the rules were created, if then it means it's possible for it to be broken again. Then the one who has created it, they will amend it, they will create another one. But rules were created in order for us to live with integrity, with honesty, and compassion with one another. This simply means that we must love God with our own heart. We say we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. As indicated in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37, it's also something that we, we, we often tend to listen to when the, 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 
the, the lay person is coming here to, to say, this is the commandment in which God has given you. You must love your God with all your heart. Making the gospel and say that Jesus replied, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He never said that love God with just half piece of you, but he said love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You are not loving him halfly, but you are loving him fully. It says this is the first and great commandments. And the second is like this love your neighbor as yourself. How will they know that you are his disciples if ever you love your neighbor as you love yourself? How me to say this maybe I draw into conclusion? So as we live on this congregation, as we give this change, as we go back into our homes, let's remember this principle, these ten commandments, and take it to heart and give them out of them. Let us try to live in a way that pleases God, a way that is uplift other people, a way that it see people maybe to see integrity in our life, a way that it show kindness. A way that is shown love, a way that reflects righteousness that God desires in us. May God help us to live out these commandments in our daily life, showing His love to the world, a world that needs love, a world that is full of hatred, a world full of corruption. Let us go there. As we tend to, as we tend to pronounce it, to say, God, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Send us to the world, this is our time, to showcase those Ten Commandments to the world, to show that you need us in the world, to show that you are His disciples, and be a blessing to those around us. How will they know that you are His disciples? If ever we tell to love one another, as we love ourselves, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
we don't understand the situation in Israel and Palestine. And what goes on in there, but we know it's not the peace in general. And so we just come and we seek you, Lord, to have mercy. To have mercy, Lord, on those innocent people. To have mercy on those who do not have faith in the heart. It's not really the solution. Please show you your way, Lord. Your way to bring peace to the happy land. Your way to bring peace to the world. And Father, we pray for our own country as well. Coming into the elections, it's still just three months. There really is really so much conflict and so much violence out in our world. We listen to people and we listen to the message to you. We kill on his way home from the university. There's absolutely no reason, Lord. It doesn't make sense. And yet it's happening in our land and in our regular nation, but we get so much hope for you. And we will still have hope because our hope is in you and our trust is in you. And we believe that we will bring it, this country to its full potential all the years. So Lord, I'm going to ask that you wouldn't have to go into a time of quiet as they just consider what your kind word or action that you take today to share your love as we go out to the world. So let's just have a time of quiet as we reflect on what we've heard and felt this morning from you, Lord Jesus. Spirit, we just ask that you just come and show us your way. Come and be our counselor, be our companion, and show us how you can do things. And just before we close our prayer, as we walk by the way, we pray for you in the area and the service. We pray for those who are helping you, especially for those mothers who are too. Say goodbye and bring you here with the children and to all the people who lost friends, family. We just pray that you will comfort them with your strength, Lord Jesus. We can be close with you in the Father. Your son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us. Answer our prayers as many years for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of the truth, and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
what can we sing for you, man? She said, Choco Chin. So, <laughs> my day, we are, I think since we came back, we never sang this song. So, we must sing it to be the bigger than Choco Chin because she likes it very much.
that God will have to take care of for you. Raising us with all the things that you do in our lives. They say, Lord, this day which we bring to you, Lord, so that, Lord, your words may continue to be preached in your church. So that, Lord, your church may continue to live, also to live for those who are in need of it, Lord. That God may save this thing, Lord, which we bring to you from the bottom of our hearts. Where is your servant? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our today's continuous on page 196 in our prayer books, I will ask that we join together as we recite the following two prayers in paragraph 15. Together we say, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your well business and the desires of our heart. Renew us by your spirit, 
a notice on the notice board. Please check it out. Uh, it's a very important meeting to attend because we will also be dealing with uh, the election of council members. So you are requested to be part of that. Uh, are there any visitors amongst us? <coughs> oh, hey, today you have no visitors. <laughs> Can we use that and then we go there and then we will finish with you? Just tell us who you are and where you're from. My name is Azul Fibine Lucaro. I'm not sure if you can see that I'm not sure if you can see So today we decided to come and visit the new family because it is our roots. We are fellowshipping here as in Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The 10th of March is next week Sunday. It is our best two, so it's one meeting, it starts at 8 o'clock. Um, I, I, I really took that for granted and not emphasized it. Thank you very much. And um, the church is still going on with the recycling um, project. We're recycling only the plastic bottles. So when you drink water at home, uh, when you buy water, and then we, those empty, we throw them out. We uh, get a new, get a separate refuse, fill them, refuse back it up, and then bring it to the church whenever you get stuck by. We are taking those bottles for recycling, and then changing goes into our uh, pockets, the church pockets. No, we only deliver plastic bottles. Okay, it can. It can. It can. Oh, that's it. Yeah, we started with the chemicals. Let me go with which brand of chemicals. We don't discriminate. No, we don't. But I think thank you very much. Eh, that's yes, that's all.
Let them do not be with us, in the name of God the Father, the Father, the Holy Spirit. Amen.